Hello guys, it's February 23rd, which means Annihilation has just been released in cinemas around the US. And I'm planning on seeing it, I'm not quite sure when, it depends on when my schedule works out, but I want to do my before thoughts. So I just read the book like a week ago. I do recommend the book, it's very short, only about 200 pages. I'd show you the physical copy, but I read it on ebook, so I can't. I don't know if I fully got the book. Like, it's written in journal form, and it's very cerebral. It's definitely an interesting story, and I'm thinking this is a book that is absolutely rife for a visual medium, because a lot of it is based on just the descriptions of Area X. But yeah, I hope that this movie does well. It's uh, It's got a 90% on the Rotten Tomatoes critics' tomato meter, and audience score of, like, in the 70s. Which, you know, is good because I want this movie to do well, not because I want a sequel to this. It's already been made clear that there aren't really going to be any sequels, but uh, Paramount has not put a lot of stock in this movie. They're not releasing it to theaters internationally. It's going to be on Netflix instead. So if you are in one of those international markets that's not going to see this in theaters, go watch it on Netflix. I really want you guys to see this and to like this because it's a huge step in getting more sci-fi speculative fiction works in film that are led by women and that's been a big thing about this. It's an all-female cast. Well, not all female. Oscar Isaac and like some of the supporting roles are men obviously, but uh, this is led by women. You've got Natalie Portman, Jennifer Jason Leigh, Tessa Thompson, and Gina Rodriguez are the four that would have analogs to um to the novel. There are a couple of others. Tuva Novotny, I think, is the other one. I haven't heard anything bad about this, and I've also heard that it's not very close to the book. I, uh, I look forward to seeing what the Don's thoughts on it are when he finally gets a chance to it. Maybe I'll be a full-time Patreon sponsor by then. Uh, but Anyway, so I want to address the uh, whitewashing controversy that's been surrounding this movie because I'm worried that might be a reason that people decide not to see it. And look, everybody who's attached to this movie has admitted that they didn't know when they were making the movie about the whitewashing, but once they did, they admitted that it was problematic and that they probably wouldn't do it again if that were a case and that we need more uh, roles for people of color in Hollywood. So uh, just a little context, uh, Natalie Portman's character, who's only referred to in the first book as the biologist or by her husband's nickname for her, Ghost Bird, is revealed in one of the later books in the Southern Reach trilogy to be of Asian descent. And Jennifer Jason Leigh's character is revealed to be at least half Native American. and. It's slightly awkwardly coincidental that these two characters happen to be the ones played by white actresses in the movie, but uh, the sequels that divulged that information were not available to the public when Alex Garland, who's the director and the screenwriter, was writing the script. And he was also, uh, he didn't want to adapt this into a trilogy from the beginning. It's kind of a Ridley Scott Blade Runner thing where they're taking the concept of the book and tweaking it significantly. Just um, from the non-spoiler pitches, you kind of get that that's an idea because, uh, well, I can't say that without getting into book spoilers. Anyway, like uh, with Black Panther, I'm not going into this expecting anything specific. This isn't like uh, Last Jedi for me. I just, I want this movie to be good. I want it to be entertaining and... I want it to do well. So, uh, yeah, if, again, if you are not in the United States, go see this movie on Netflix. It's only about, it's a little less than two hours, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. And if you are in the United States, please try to get to a theater to see it. Uh, February is usually when people are releasing movies they don't think are that good, unless, you know, it's something like Black Panther. Yeah, I hope, uh, I hope Annihilation does well. I hope that I end up liking it. And, yeah, I mean, I'm not a big horror fan, but the last time I really saw a horror movie and I wasn't expecting it was Black Swan, so 
yeah, Natalie Portman. I have a type. I've noticed that. <laughs> All right. Well, I will post this once I have seen the movie and let you know what my thoughts were. Someone get my mind some plan B because it just got fucked. It's very early in the morning on February 25th and I just got back from seeing Annihilation. Uh, I still recommend you go see it. That's the first thing. Uh, actually, go see it. Go see it right now. Pause this video. Take like three hours. I mean, just allotting for travel time. This movie's less than two hours, but uh, go see it. Because, wow. Don't do what I did. Do not read the book before you read this. Because it's just so wholly its own thing. And if you have the book fresh in your mind, you're going to be asking, what? Why? How? You're probably going to be asking these questions anyway, but, oh boy. This is nothing, like, nothing like the book. It's, um... It's trippy. Do not, uh, do not see this if you've just taken drugs of some kind, because your mind will be like, what? I'd actually say, like, this is the trippiest film I've ever seen. It ranks above, like, Inception or, uh, you know, Doctor Strange. It's just, oh boy. <laughs> I wish I'd seen Ex Machina, because I, that's the only other film Alex Garland has ever done, and I don't have any frame of reference. Uh, anyway, story-wise, it's... I think a lot more conventional than the book. Like, I wouldn't say it's a hero's journey, but, like, it's kind of a hero's journey because Natalie Portman's character, uh, Lena, gets, like, the call to action, sort of. She gets pulled into this strange new world of the Area X project. And, um, yeah. All the cast is pretty good. Uh, the one person who didn't really work for me was Jennifer Jason Lee. She was kind of boring compared to the others. Uh, I think the standouts actually were Tessa Thompson and Gina Rodriguez. Uh, if you're a fan of Jean the Virgin, do not see this expecting Gina Rodriguez to be anything like that. I, whoa! Tessa Thompson's character, I think, is the... Well, she was the highlight of the film for me. She's... Very quiet and understated, but when she does speak, there's a lot of gravity to her, and she's kind of the emotional core of it. She has probably the best scene in the entire movie. I don't want to go into details because it's spoilerific, but wow, that that moment alone was just worth everything. It Wow. This is not for the faint of heart. There were, uh, there were three jump scares that were all very effectively used, but there's also quite a bit of gross-out imagery. Um, there's quite a bit of blood and body horror. Yeah, body horror is definitely the term to go with. Um, and just some mind weirdness. I'm, uh, I'm gonna be honest, half of this was, like, at least the first part of the movie was just me, like, cracking up. And, uh, making jokes about, you know, Padme's banging Poe Dameron and Jane Foster and Valkyrie are going on a science adventure together without Thor. And I also got a chuckle out of Jennifer Jason Lee's character being named Ventress because, uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars joke. Yeah, this is why I shouldn't watch movies late at night. Oh god, I'm tired. I'm gonna get into spoilers now, uh, because... This is the thing that's probably bugging me the most. They changed the meaning of Annihilation for the movie. There's a title drop in both book and movie, but the context is so different. So, book spoilers first. Uh, Annihilation in the book is a code word that the psychologist uses because everybody on the mission has been given conditioning via hypnotism to respond to certain words, and annihilation is the biologist's word to make her commit suicide. Yeah, everybody in the team has one of those, and so that's, like, that is a major turning point in the book. In the movie, annihilation ties into the theme of self-destruction and within recreation. Jennifer Jason Lee's character says it right before she goes into 
the majority of the visual effects budget. She's like, Wah! and it uh, it lifts the image from one of the book's more striking moments without the context of it. So like, there are all these golden spores swirling around as Jennifer Jason Lee's body disappears into this shiny mirror creature that Natalie Portman fights with. And this was where the movie lost me. Like, I was like, what is the point of all of this? Because it seemed to go on forever. It was kind of like Lord of the Rings, Fellowship, Return of the King. Like, there were a couple of points when you thought it was going to end or it was going to do something and then it just kept going. But then the way it did end, it left me wondering what the movie had been trying to say. To be clear, I I liked this movie. I want to see it again. It it achieved its purpose. It had me watching the whole time. I was hooked, and I want to see it again to understand it better. And I had a good experience. Well, not good, but I think I felt what the director wanted me to feel. But also, like, what was that? Wow. I think I'm running out of things to say. Oh, God. I should leave this editing for morning me to do and just get some sleep, but... Oh. Um. Yeah, go go see this movie. Uh, preferably not at this late at night as I did, but, uh, let's see it. See it multiple times. <laughs> More sci-fi like this, please. Not retreads, but new stuff. Stuff that makes us go, what? More. More. Oh, and uh, don't forget to watch my other videos and to subscribe and to like this and share it and comment and, and get some sleep. Take care of yourself. All right. Peace.